In today's YouTube video, I wanna talk about the fact that most people do not deserve to be growth partners. And the reason why I'm even making a video about this is because I've been seeing everybody left and right change their profile to being called growth partners. And the issue with this is that these are people who have yet to scale any business, not their own business, not their clients' businesses, but they're jumping straight to becoming growth partners. So you know, I've hit a $7 million run rate. I thought I could create a piece of content that could actually educate you a little bit more on what it it takes to be a growth partner. Now, I actually want to go first onto the benefit of being a growth partner, the pros of being a growth partner. Then I want to talk about why most people don't deserve to be growth partners. And then the third thing I want to talk about is most importantly, the strategic risks of becoming a growth partner when you are not ready to be one. And lastly, I want to talk about the model that I personally took to scale past 600 grand a month and over half a million dollars in cash collected every single month, taking home over a quarter of a million dollars in profit in cash, take home bet as my own salary when two years before that i was just making two thousand dollars at my nine to five i didn't have to become a growth partner in order to make that kind of money so in today's video at the end if you stay till the end i want to share with you guys a better model that prepares you to be a growth partner so let's get started to begin i'd like to share the pros of becoming a growth partner in my opinion there are three benefits of becoming a growth partner the fact that you get to deal with less clients you know traditionally with an agency you have to get more clients in order to make more money as a growth partner so you scale vertically you go deep into the business not vertically with more clients okay so that's benefit number one benefit number two is the fact that you get higher retainers i just got off a call with a good friend of mine who's built multiple seven-figure businesses and i ended up partnering up with 15 businesses he ended up letting them go on this growth consulting growth partner model but what he ended up realizing is that it's super hard to find really great businesses because most businesses that you're partnering up with don't even want to scale so out of 15 partners he ended up letting go half of them exited two and remained one like four or five businesses that he was a partner on so less clients and each of them that he was partnering up with he would charge 150k a year plus four percent or five percent of uh, rev share or profit share i don't remember i would need the specifics that's benefit number two you get to charge yearly deals and you get also the ability to charge ref share or profit share. The beautiful thing is since you're charging 12 month agreements, 24 month agreements, even three year agreements, the beautiful thing is the lifetime value is really, really high. So as a growth partner, it's an amazing life. You get to work less, you get to make a lot of money from the people you're working with, and you don't have to worry about losing clients, you know, until the agreement is done is technically, okay? So those are the three benefits. If we just looked at the benefits, so just focused on the pros of becoming a growth partner. We would all be dumb not to become growth partners, right? Why would you stick to selling to small fishes, small retainers, and churn every 90 days, every 60 days when you could just become a growth partner? Well, that's the thing that a lot of people are not telling you, okay? It's this hidden mountain that you have to climb in order to become a proficient growth partner. And in this video, I want to walk you guys through what it actually takes for you to become a growth partner. In order for you to become a growth partner and to be someone that businesses are willing to pay 150,000, a quarter of a million, even half a million dollars a year, on top of the profit share or the rev share, this is what you need to master. First thing that you need to be really good at, and by good, I mean you need to be a beast, okay? That is strategic planning. You need to be able to develop implement strategies that grow businesses that means that identifying trends identify new niches and markets to enter you need to be able to set up a plan to launch new products and services and if it's a territory you need to also figure out a way to plan in a way to get into these new territories for these businesses that's one the second thing that you need to master is business development you need to be good at building and maintaining relationships with clients partners and other stakeholders they may also be involved in negotiating deals or partnerships that are crucial for growth. The third thing is market and sales support, working closely with marketing and sales teams to drive revenue growth. This could involve providing insights into marketing campaigns, sales strategies. What are the best mechanisms to leverage? Are we gonna leverage video content, short form, YouTube? What are the best creatives? What are the best you know, funnels? Are we gonna do SLO, self-liquidating offers? Are we just gonna send people to a VSL funnel? And then people just book a call right there and then. Okay, and of course you can be a growth partner in different industries and depending on the industry, the funnel change and the creative change, but you need to be on top of this thing, okay? That means you need to be swimming 
in the juice of learning everything about everything for that business that you're partnered up with. You need to be their chat GPT. The fourth thing is you need to be really great at data analysis and metrics, analyzing data to track performance and identify areas of improvement. Growth partners often use metrics to evaluate the effectiveness of growth strategies. Guys, if you have yet to build great dashboards in a business that track every single input and track also the output of the inputs, like if you don't even know the leading indicators in the business, how are you going to become a growth partner? You cannot. OK, I mean, you need to figure out, are you going to use which CRM are you going to use? Are you going to use Airtable? Which systems are you going to build to pull that data? OK, you need to have to know that. All right. And then the next thing is innovation and change management, encouraging, facilitating innovation within the organization. You should lead and support initiatives that aim to improve processes, technologies and organizational culture to foster growth. You also need to be good at resource allocation. You need to be a capital allocator. You need to advise on where should the money be leveraged? Where should the talent be leveraged the most? Are we going to put setters on Facebook? Are we going to hire more Facebook growth specialists? Are we going to spend more money on Meta? Are we going to spend more money on an intent platform? Platform, which is let's say YouTube ads are we gonna you know do email marketing are we gonna do SMS marketing are we gonna what are we gonna do are we gonna do a webinar should we hire someone to structure our VSL our webinar structure like all these things are decisions to be made you need to make sure that that business spends the money where the best ROI exists because you're good at Facebook ad and going to a business and say oh my experience is Facebook ad therefore as a growth partner I'm only going to help you guys with Facebook ad or meta it doesn't work like that okay so you're you can't be just knowledgeable on one thing you need to understand Google ads you need to understand meta you need to understand Alban prospecting on LinkedIn cold email every place because Different offers perform differently depending on the platform, the, on the acquisition channel. And your job as a growth partner is you need to pick the strategy and where the money is going to be allocated depending on the channel. OK, so if you don't have experience in that field, you're going to have a hard time. OK, and then the last one is you need to be an advisor, providing expert advice and insights into senior management and other departments on growth related issues. Most people watching this have yet to even master booking appointments. OK, that's that's the that's the truth. How exactly do you expect to be a growth partner if you haven't even figured out a way to get people to become leads, to turn that lead into data that you own, to turn that intent or that attention into owned attention and to turn that owned attention and nurture them and increase the quality and increase the intent of these prospects. And then from there, get them to book an appointment and then from there, get them to show up to an appointment and then from there, get them to buy. If you have not mastered this, this is just the foundation. If you haven't mastered this, being a growth partner should not be on your phone. It should not be on your calendar. It should not be on your mind. You still have a lot to learn. Even me, who's made millions and millions of dollars. OK, and I think I've, I've been OK. You know, I quit my job in 2020, 2021 to 2023, collected over five million dollars. So I've, I'm OK. But even I don't think I'm yet qualified to be a growth partner. The truth of the matter is, is that no matter how exciting uh, becoming a growth partner may seem, you're probably not yet deserving of becoming one. And if someone ever gives you the opportunity to become one before you've made the millions yourself or for clients, then they just want to take advantage of you. I've seen this time and time again. People who are great marketers are offered this opportunity to become a growth partner and just work for free and get a percentage of, of revenue because the founders don't want to pay for their skill. So they're giving them this role, this title so that they don't have to pay the talent. OK, so most of you guys who haven't mastered all these things that I just walked you guys who end up getting someone to give you the role of a growth partner. Unfortunately, that person who just gave you the job don't want to pay they or maybe they don't have the money to pay you and they just want to save money by hiring you. Someone who's not necessarily yet at the level of being a great growth partner. They just want to find the person who's average, not pay them, but give them the title in order to avoid paying you. They're essentially giving you a I'll give you this role and the potential to make money or I don't have to pay you. Now, let's cover strategic risks of being a growth partner. I just showed you the amazing benefits, the pros of being a, a growth partner, but I actually want to go over the cons and the, the risk of being a growth partner. OK, 
First one, and these are things that most people don't talk about, but for me, as someone who understands business and as someone who thinks a little bit more like an investor, I also got to show you guys the uh, strategic risks. First one is customer or client concentration risk. What is customer concentration risk? Okay, you can go to ChatGPT, find a definition, but I'm going to give you guys a simple definition. It's really simple. When you're starting out as a growth partner, because most people looking at this will be starting out, the issue is you can only maybe work with five businesses. Okay. What you have to understand is that with every client that you're working with out of the five, they represent 20% of your income. Okay. That means that the home you live in, the car you drive, the food you eat, the restaurant at which you go to, the cars, how many cars you own, do you fly private, do you fly first class, business class, or are you in economy will be dictated by the businesses that you're partnered up with. If they're making a lot of money, you're going to make a lot of money. If they're making little money, you're going to make no money. Okay. But what's even riskier is the fact that if you lose one client, you lose 20% of your cash flow. Okay. As someone who want to protect their livelihood, I personally would not like to put 20% of my livelihood of my rent of how much money I, I save at the end of the month. I wouldn't want to put that in one person's hand or one business. And that's where a lot of people, especially if you're an investor, most investors don't like concentration risk. When an investor comes into your business and you tell them, Hey, I'm making 30% of my money from this specific group of clients or from this client, they'll be like, Hey, that's really risky. We don't want anybody to represent 5% or more of the money that's coming into the business. Okay. So if you ever learn a little bit about value investing and businesses that invest, uh, or, you know, private equity and, you know, companies that invest in other businesses, you will realize that they don't want any person, any customer, any client to represent a big chunk of their cash flow. And that's where concentration risk comes in. Okay. And the other problem with this type of concentration in this model is the fact that it's super hard to find great businesses to partner with. Okay. So that means that if you lose one client, if you lose 20% of your revenue, uh, let's say in a month, it will probably take you five, six months and above to find someone who's really good to replace them. It's not that you won't be able to find people you can partner with is to find someone who's worthy of being partnered up with you is going to take you a long time. So that's the other thing. The second risk with being a growth partner is the fact that every client kind of owns you, right? Their expectations are super high and it's totally normal because their success depends on your productivity. If I had to hire a growth partner, I expect them to handle everything when it comes to growth. So if I wake up and I'm like, Hey, we don't have enough appointments. We haven't made the money we're projecting to make. And it's 3 AM and I just look at Stripe and I'm like, Hey, I haven't made the money. So as an example, I'm gonna look at Stripe right now. Okay. So if I go on Stripe, okay. And I open it, I'm like, Oh, but today we made $31,000. Okay. But yesterday we only made $5,000. So yesterday I would go to bed at 3 a.m. and be like, why did we only make $5,000? We were supposed to make 20 to 30 to 40 grand a day, every single day of the week. Okay. And I'm calling you because I expect you to know why and to give me a plan as to how we're going to be able to make more money. That's the expectations that a growth partner, that someone who owns a business expects from a growth partner. If you ever partner with me, I kind of like own you. I'm gonna pay you well, but the money comes with a lot of problems. The third problem is the lack of leverage. Most growth partners are glorified growth consultants who are hired to fulfill responsibilities. Most of them won't have a team of experts with them as they're leveraging the company's talent. But other than that, the growth partner has to be involved in everything going on in that business. As someone who only has 10 hours a day to allocate, allocate to work. You can only advise, build, implement strategies and tactics, review performance for so many companies before you go crazy. In other words, being a growth partner without your own team is just having a really high paying job. And although you have the potential to make a lot of money, you don't really have freedom because freedom doesn't come from you making a lot of money from the time you spend working. It comes from you having the leverage and the ability to make money without 
exerting a lot of effort or spending a lot of time. Now, understanding the problem with the growth partner uh, model, which is a lot of concentration risk, customer client concentration risk, the fact that every client owns you and they expect the world from you. And the third is the fact that you lack leverage and you're just a hustler and you, yes, you're gonna make a lot of money, hopefully, but you don't really have a lot of leverage when it comes to time leverage because you don't own that much talent people are hiring you, not hiring your team most of the time. And most growth partners don't actually have teams on hand. What do I personally suggest? And what did I do to get to the point where I'm taking home a quarter of a million a month in profit, cash, net take home, two years after quitting my $30,000 a year job? Now, what I'm about to walk you guys through is a model, a sequence of activities that can allow you to get rich, gain leverage, and finally, gain time freedom, which leads to actually becoming wealthy. My goal is not for you to tell you how to make a lot of money. For sure, you need to go through that. But what I'd love to, to potentially teach you guys is the, the, the thought process around how to set up your sequence of you know the activities that you do so that over time you become wealthy, but not just cash rich and time poor. I'm about to share with you guys what I've personally done. As someone who's gone from running a done free agency, uh, making 30K a month, to scaling it done with your growth consultancy to 600 grand a month, to now having partners who pay me yearly and that we have revenue share with, this is what I would personally do if I was to start from scratch. Step number one is master one mechanism. Okay, by mechanism, I mean maybe be really good at cold email. Maybe become really good at Instagram outreach. Maybe become really good at Facebook out group outreach. Maybe become really good at Twitter outreach. For me, when I was starting out, I mastered Instagram outreach and Facebook group outreach. And I figured out a way to leverage $3 an hour VAs to do the outreach on behalf of my clients. That's the first thing that I scaled to $30,000 a month. You uncover everything that can go wrong and how to solve it by doing done for you first. You do not want to skip done for you, all right? Because if you skip done for you, you will not be able to acquire the insights that you will need to be as valuable to your clients. Step two is become a growth creator. And instead of doing done for you, you wanna sell the infrastructure. You wanna build and release the thing that you were normally using within the agency to fulfill for your clients. Instead, you wanna do it for your clients, okay? This is the thing that took me from 30K a month to making over 600 grand a month making over half a million dollars in cash collected and over a quarter of a million in that month of December. Now, what does it mean to sell an infrastructure? An infrastructure really means you're selling insights, systems, and talent, giving them the SOPs, giving them the systems, and if you can, giving them the talent to implement the, on the insights and to manage the systems. What are the benefits of doing this? Well, it allowed me to charge 10 times the monthly retainer and I would get it up front because it's an actual tangible asset. All right. And I would use the money because I was now super profitable to afford better talent to fulfill on the infrastructure, meaning it would allow me to remove myself from fulfillment. OK, because I would end up hiring better people, better people at recruiting, better people at training, better people at systems. I would hire the best systems integrators and I would also hire better strategists. And that allowed me to literally not be needed in fulfillment. The only thing I was needed for is to be a YouTuber. And that's how I was able to scale to 600 grand a month. Okay. I did not sell. I did not book appointments. I did not do nothing. And I was making more money doing this. Doing this allows you to build an insane client customer base as you work with 10 to 30 businesses per month. And it normally takes you four weeks to deliver the infrastructure. And the beautiful thing, this is that since you're hiring or you're closing or you're onboarding 20, 30, 40, plus businesses a month, you don't have to deal with customer concentration risk anymore. Every client represents maybe 2% of your revenue. No clients can threaten you, okay? Because you have so many clients, all right? And that was the beautiful thing. And that's how this growth creator model of selling, building and releasing infrastructures is a lot better than, at least for me, it was more peaceful. I was not stressed because one client wasn't happy because I had a lot more clients and I could afford for people not to be happy because I was bigger. I got big enough so that no one could threaten my success. Okay. That's benefit number two from step number two. Step number three is only once you've gone through the first two phases of being a done for you agency owner and secondly, selling infrastructures. Okay. The first one can maybe get you from 10 to 50 K a month or hundred K a month. If you want to push it, the second thing has the potential to get you to hundred K a month up to a million dollars a month. All right. And then only once you've gone through these first two phases, should you go through partnering up with clients and actually becoming a growth partner. Okay. Now, why is that sequence important? 
First things first is because you now will be able to have a team of experts to help the partners that you end up working with. Okay. That's what happens with me. For me, since, you know, for the partners that we end up having, I don't have to sell my time. Okay, because my goal has never been to be owned by the business. My goal is to own a business. Okay, so I have better people at different things at media buying, at systems, at sales, and at operations than I could ever be. But the only way I'm able to have this talent is because I went through different models that allowed me to be profitable enough to have this big of a team. Okay, and then I can use this team to go be valuable in the partners that I work with. And the second benefit of having gone through the first two phases and not skipping to a growth partner is the fact that you now have built a pool of clients and customers to choose from. Right now, if you were to decide to be a growth partner, you would have to go do client acquisition. For me, I only have to go open up our client database and I'll be like, okay, who's making over six figures a month and who, want, who we can take to half a million dollars a month and above. And I would find a few names and I would be like, hey, do you want to get on a call? I think we can deliver great value. And that's how we get the client. I don't have to pay money for acquiring clients. I don't have to go promote. I don't have to go do nothing because I already have a pool of client. I already have a client base. But when you skip to step three, you have to go do outreach. And it's super hard to sell a multiple six figure deal and a ref share to someone who's cold and who don't know anything about you. If you follow the three phases that I just walked you guys through and you follow them in the right sequence, okay, you don't jump to growth partner before. If you follow them properly, I believe that you can easily make $10 million to $30 million effortlessly. If you learn to enjoy the game of business and you, you're okay with adapting as the time change. Okay. But if you're interested in learning how to sell infrastructures, I actually created a 13 hour course, so everything I mapped out, how we go about building offers, you know, actual infrastructures, how we pick the insights, the systems and the talents to place how we go about building audiences on YouTube, because you need a really big audience to be able to make over half a million dollars a month. I did it with 6,000 subscribers on YouTube. You could probably achieve that too, if you could uh, spend either the money or the time to be great at content. And also the client acquisition infrastructures we leverage to generate over half a million dollars a month and the fulfillment, the operations and how we structured. Uh, if you want access to that course, it's I think it's $49 a week. If you join our natural bone leader community, you get to have all that uh, information uh, for free as a bonus by you joining the natural bone leader community. And yeah, so click the link below, access it and uh, let me know what you guys think. Bye bye.